Hello everybody and welcome. This is History Dude and today we will be continuing our series on the history of battle focusing on the Battle of the Granicus as part of Alexander the Great's campaigns in May of 334 BCE. Now before I get into Alexander the Great's campaign I would like to start with the advent of Macedonian power. Now the citizen army of hoplites fighting in phalanxes represented the ancient Greek ideal of warfare. In reality, however, armies were a mixture of citizens, non-citizens, and mercenaries. Poorer men generally fought as skirmishers, harassing phalanxes with stones and arrows, while peltasts were specifically trained javelin throwers who proved, proved capable on occasion of inflicting defeat even on the hardy Spartan hoplites. The Greeks eventually lost their independence to their northern neighbors, the Macedonians, also Greek in culture, who had perfected their own form of warfare, a mixed force of professional infantry fighting in a phalanx, skirmishers on foot and on horseback, and an elite infantry accompanying their chief. And Macedonian conquests under Philip of Macedon and Alexander the Great um, the Greek phalanx was reinvented and cavalry armed with lances became the crucial force on the battlefield. And this is how they reinvented the phalanx. Now, hoplites were organized in a tighter formation of greater depth than before, and each carried a two-handed 20 to 23 foot, or that's 6 to 7 meters, long spear, the sarissa, which is much longer than the 6.5 foot spear used by the regular hoplites. Now, under Alexander's inspired generalship, the cavalry, infantry phalanx, and light skirmishers were combined to maximum effect, achieving conquest on an unprecedented scale by seizing the Persian Empire and Asia as far as northern India. The impact of this encounter with Asia was already visible before Alexander's death, with Persians taking more important positions in the Macedonian forces. The Asian influence continued in the successor states to Alexander's empire, in Persia, Egypt, and Greece, which would, in turn, eventually prove vulnerable to the rising power of Rome. But that's getting a little bit too far ahead. Now here you can see a picture of Alexander the Great. Now, the triumph of Alexander over Macedon, of Macedon over the mighty Persians between 334 and 323 BCE was an exploit of unparalleled audacity, creating an empire stretching from Greece to India. He achieved this feat with the army he had inherited from his father, Philip, with its irresistible cavalry, hardened infantry, and light forces of auxiliaries. The makeup of this force reflected Alexander's proclaimed desire to wage war on behalf of all Greeks. It included Macedonians, Thessalians and Thracians, as well as Cretans and Balkans. He himself was an indomitable leader, seizing the initiative on all occasions and pursuing the destruction of his enemies in battle. And here you can see just the, how far um, his empire extended. But before his empire got this far, he had to fight the battle on the Granicus, which is what we we're going to be focusing on in this video. Now, succeeding his murdered father in 336 BCE, Alexander first consolidated his hold on Greece by brutally suppressing a rebellion by Thebes. By 334 BCE, he felt secured enough to embark on the campaign against Persia that his father had planned. Alexander's army sailed across the Hellespont, right here, into Anatolia, and in itself a complex operation involving thousands of troops as well as siege equipment. It then marched east into Persian-ruled territory. Now, Alexander intended to follow the coastline since his army would depend on resupply by the sea, and mounted scouts rode in front of the main body, and it was they who reported the presence of the present Persian forces drawn up on the far bank of the Granicus River, which you can see here. Now, the army assembled by the local Persian commanders included a large number of Greek mercenaries. It was outnumbered by Alexander's forces, but had taken up a strong defensive position. The river ran fast, and its banks were steep. An opposed crossing would be a risky venture. 
Now, reaching the river in the late afternoon, Alexander led across a cavalry attack, as you can see here on the right. Battle was joined on the far bank as the Persian cavalry attempted to push the Macedonians back into the river, horse pressing against horse. In the thick of the fighting, Alexander lost his spear and almost his life. But the Persian horsemen soon broke before the ferocious Macedonian onslaught, and Alexander's infantry were able to wade across to join in, as you can see here. Now, they quickly surrounded the Persian forces, massacring more than 15,000 of them. Those of whom the Macedonians took prisoner, they sent to work as slaves. And that is it for this battle. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope you have found it educational. And as always, this has been History Dude, and have an awesome day.